They Clone Tyrone is a sci-fi film that's heavily influenced by black exploitation films from the 70s and 80s, whilst also combining aspects of hood films from the 90s and beyond. The main cast are brilliant and consists of a drug dealer, a pimp, and a hoe. Some would say staples of black exploitation films. The film is a comedy, but also explores the deep roots of institutionalized racism in America. John Boyega really does well as the main character Fontaine, with his American accent and his swagger and his movement really makes him feel like a seasoned gangbanger. Even some emotional moments in the film, he knows how to switch it up. Jamie Foxx is brilliant as well as a rather zesty pimp called Sick Charles, and some of the funniest lines of the film come from him. And Taylor Paris is a hoe called Yo-Yo. I believe she's a standout in this film, with her detective skills and her desire to really get to the bottom of the conspiracy that is happening within the town. Set almost entirely in an economically depressed but vibrant black neighborhood somewhere in America. And big emphasis on somewhere, it doesn't say which state or part of the country the Glen is in, which is an amalgamation of all black culture from the old timey cars, corner stores, hair salons, strip clubs, gangsters and pimps walking around. It doesn't feel like this place has a set time period, but it acts as if everything exists all at once. Then again, they talk about the blockchain, but they also have flip phones as well, and they also have retro technology, so it's kind of hard to really pinpoint it, but I don't think it really matters all that much. Before I go any further, I will talk about spoilers, and the best way to experience this film is completely blind. So, there's an underground government facility full of white people that experiment on and control the black community through fried chicken, perm hair products, cereal, drugs, music, and church, which are all used to control the black community, to keep them divided and against each other, and to keep them docile and to assimilate them. A plot like that sounds so silly and bonkers that you wouldn't expect it to work or take it seriously, but it somehow does. It just, just works. works. In fact, they use this crazy concept to give some really interesting social commentary on issues facing African Americans, similar in a way that the boondocks would. The film has a constant film grain to it, which I really liked to help replicate the feel of a 70s black exploitation film or a grindhouse film. It also creates this unique look and vibe that the film takes place in the 70s, but it doesn't. It takes place in modern times, or as I said, an amalgamation of all the decades. The film wastes no time getting into the mystery. In fact, in the first half an hour, they find this secret, and the rest of the film is them trying to fight back and take it down. There are lots of areas this film wants to cover and provide commentary on that you'd think it would slip up and not give enough time to it, but somehow it does rather well with addressing most topics. The film reminded me a lot of Get Out and Us, which everyone else has also said, but it also reminded me a lot of Cabin in the Woods, as well as Black Dynamite, the film and the animated series. The film is very similar to Sorry to Bother You, which I think it takes most inspiration from. If you have seen Sorry to Bother You, you would understand. And as I said earlier, as well as having the social commentary, which heavily reminded me of the boondocks. The film feels like a conversation from the film Friday, like something Ice Cube and Chris Tucker would chat about on their porch. It's like something they would discuss as like a conspiracy theory. The main trio I liked a lot because they were quite intelligent and capable. They didn't feel like the Scooby-Doo gang who run away whenever they encounter a monster. If anything, it felt like the antagonist would be scared of the main trio with how dedicated they are to uncovering the mystery by not being weak and fragile. And it reminds me of those like sketches up on YouTube about how, how black people would react to actual situations in horror films. Georgie, how are you? First of all, my name ain't no damn Georgie. And what are you doing in this dirty ass gutter? Your name's whatever the fuck I say it is. The main trio are all, all really capable and I never got annoyed at them for doing stuff wrong. Very smart protagonists, which I liked a lot. When I, when I was watching the film, I liked to predict what would happen next and what the overarching plot and bad guy would be, but I was constantly wrong and surprised with how the plot and story actually unfolded. Even the post credit scene is the cherry on top, and you should definitely keep watching until that happens. Since everyone's watching Barbie and Oppenheimer, and those films are taking the limelight as of now, do watch this film. It is on Netflix, so you can watch it at home, and don't let this film be forgotten or overlooked. They clone Tyrone. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. The social commentary is quite in your face, but I feel like it adds to the craziness of the plot. The fact there isn't any subtlety once again comes back to the films from the 70s black exploitation films being quite over the top of their plots and premise. Later in the film where they infiltrate the facility and find out they are clones, and then later unite the community to take it over, it shows that when the community was able to come together and instead of destroying themselves and fight against each other, they were able to overcome the the control the government had over them. It's original, non-preachy, and portrays everyday African Americans as able to solve their problems instead of showing them as helpless pawns. At the end, when the stakes become high and the neighborhood was under threat, the gangs made peace and people started strategizing with the hoes, drunks, and the regular working people. I believe this is a great message to show people and all people. This film is a far more empowering instead of depressing like Get Out, so great job to the director and cast.